Shepard's one-third rule on uh, any kind of nymph fly in general. And I'm gonna, I'm holding on to this tag end, and I'm bringing it back right on the top of the shank, right to the bend. Okay, and it's right on top, and I'm gonna leave it there. Okay, I can even maybe go one wrap further just to the bend, and then. In this size, uh, you only need two two of these fine little fibers. Anything less than the uh, 16. The 16, I'm going to use four. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to pull out um, four of these fibers, and one um, really accentuates. He puts really long tails on his, and I'm not sure why, because nymph tails are generally not like a dry fly or a spinner tail in length. So I'm going to just kind of eyeball in. I hope everyone can kind of see this, but I'm tying in on top all four of them. I'm going to start kind of approximate uh, the length of the shank and then I can adjust. So I'm going to pinch those two, just two wraps, okay, tie them in on top and look at my length, okay, and that's that's about the same length of the shank and then I'm going to just go two wraps forward. Okay, and now they're all clumped together and they're really difficult to work with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take take this tag end. Yeah, if, uh, again with the light I can't. And you can really pull that tight. Okay, and then I'm going to just give that a couple wraps to secure it and that should keep them splayed. The only trick there is when you tie in and leave your tag end you've wrapped back to the tag end so your thread wraps have the tag end and you gotta make sure that when you tie your tailing fibers in that you're wrapping one wrap over top of the the tied in tag end so that when you pull them forward it's gonna pull against everything and splay them out. You will notice if you don't do that and you pull that tight you're not gonna get a very good splay on that. So I come up and I'm at about the, the one third, two thirds point on this. And I can always drop a little bit of UV resin on that to keep them out even further if I wanted to get fancy. So I'm going to come in right on the top and I'm going to just lash that in. So I've got it right on the top give it just a couple turns and I'm going to pull it real tight on the top as I go back to the tails. Okay, and I'm going to just leave that there and um, leave, a, leave a little bit of uh, space between where you tied back the tails because your first wrap will, will go back that far. And now I'm just going to come back up and I'm going to build a very slim, slight taper. So I'm going back and forth, and you can untwist your thread if it's uh, and lay it more flat. So I'll come back almost to the end, and then I'll come back up to the sort of one third point. Then I'll go back, okay, and then I'll come back up, and I'll just go right to the eye to make sure I'm good. So here I am there, very slim taper on that. <clears throat> you don't need it, if you don't have a rotary vise it's no problem, I'm just messing around with it. I find it's, can give you, it'll, if you're ribbing stuff, it'll give you a very um, even and uniform rib. So I'll take this out and I'll pull it really tight as um, and however tight you want depending on the size of the fly. and I'll come up into there, okay, and I'm going to keep tension on it. Get that out of the way, cinch that up. How many wraps? Just as you want to have some separation there, so it's just like you're ribbing a, a copper wire or whatever on a pheasant tail, you want the same segmentation, so I, I just go up to the point where I'm comfortable. Three turns, on top and then just a couple to lock it in in front there. Keep stretching that out. Actual pattern, and this is I guess sacrilegious in the professional tying nymphing world, um, 
One will use fluorofibers for the wing case and the legs. And if you ever look, if you look at uh, plates or scientific kind of dorky plates on, on abatis, no matter what species or range or geographical area, for the most part they have an almost black wing case. And that's, I think if, if fish are smart enough or have good enough eyes to see a nymph like this, they're obviously keying in on something. And if there's one definition of a betis nymph that I've ever seen, it's that they have a, pr a predominantly dark black wing case. So um, this is a point where uh, the actual pattern will have a mylar um, or some sort of holographic mylar wing case over top of the the um, fluorofiber or in my case the EP fiber but I don't think it's needed I think there's enough sheen on this and I'm going to put a little drop of UV resin over the wing case just for durability and, and a little bit more uh, taper and we're going to tie this in on top so I'm coming back to the I just want to have kind of a I'm starting to build because there's no dubbing in here on the thorax. You could add dubbing if you wanted to make it a little bit more buggy, but then again, it's not the slim shading anymore. So I'm coming back to about the one third point, and here I'm focusing on keeping a slender thorax as well. So I'm going to tie this in on top, with a couple wraps, and I'm just going to pull it back to get it behind the eye of the hook. Give it a couple more. And then I'll actually take my thumb just to flatten it out on top a little bit. And come back to where I'm comfortable at the one third point. And if there's a few loose ends, it's not a big deal at all. Just don't want to crowd the eye. Okay, so now I just want to build a little bit of a bulk and a, a uniform taper in the thorax. So I'm just going to go back and forth a little bit. I want it pretty smooth and even. But I'm also going to look underneath and just see what how how the the taper looks and how the bulk's doing. So actually, when I'm wrapping this thorax, it's all thread, which is nice and simple. Again, thin. Okay, so there I'm right behind the eye of the hook, and the advantage of these hooks is that it does have a nice big ring eye on it, so you don't need to be too too concerned. I'm just going to pull this forward. I'm going to pull it nice and flat there, and the other advantage of having the longer piece is you have more to work with here. And I'm just going to hold it off away as I give it the first wrap. Okay. And give it two turns there, just one turn in behind to lock it in. Okay. So it's all on top. And just to make it a little bit more workable now, I'll trim just about an inch off there. Set that aside. And now I'm just going to, again, because we're at the head of the fly and I, want, I don't want too many wraps here, I'm just going to separate it out. Okay. And I'm pulling it back on one side with two turns. And the other side with two turns. And I'm letting go. Again, I've only the, like to create this whole thing of about six turns on the head, and then I'm just going to give it about a four turn whip finish, and that's going to be it. Again, you'll probably go and lose this on the first cast hanging up on a rock or a weed or something, so <laughs> if it falls apart, it's not the end of the world. Um, and then I'm going to come in, and the legs, uh, you don't obviously want these big legs so in if you look at the legs of a mayfly nymph they're they're very short so they're already back here away so I'm gonna come in pull them up over the top and I'm gonna cut them off just in behind the uh, start of the thorax there okay and that's giving you your legs uh, and this again with resin and this small fly a little bit will go a long way so I'm just going to literally take a bodkin and just put like a really tiny that might even be too much and I'm just going to come in and make sure my legs are out of the way I'm just going to start right behind the thorax and just drop that in there 
try not to, to catch it on the legs and that's just going to help to lock everything in too. But when you do look at it, it all of a sudden just makes this nice bubble and just kind of makes everything nice and cool and finishes the fly. So we'll cure that.